Good morning, and once again, welcome to our daily reflection. Now, our Bible reading this morning is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, and it's chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. Now, about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And there are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another speaking in different types of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Now in my teenage years, I had what I've always considered to be a real piece of luck when I was invited to join a local amateur orchestra. I've been learning to play the violin since primary school days scraping away and no doubt putting my parents through many hours of torture as I practiced my scales, arpeggios and easy solo pieces. But, as they say, practice makes perfect, well, at least in my case, tolerable at least. And my tutor decided that the best way for me to make further progress now was to join him his fellow tutors and about 40 of their students every Saturday morning and experience the joys of orchestral music. And you know, what a joy it was to sit among so many musicians and discover that although you're all playing different instruments and many of you are playing different notes at different times, it all somehow fits together and sounds absolutely fabulous. Yes, I have to say, there was the occasional hint of um, instrumental class distinction with the violins considering themselves to be superior to the violas, cellos and double basses and the flutes, oboes and clarinets looking down their noses at the trumpets and trombones in the brass section. But it was really nothing more than a bit of light-hearted banter when it came to the crunch of concert night, everyone acknowledged that, in reality, we were all blessed with different skills, all of which were needed for the music to fit together and be complete. Now, in today's Bible reading, St Paul is addressing a situation which had arisen in the Corinthian church, and some members there who were blessed with certain spiritual gifts were in danger of thinking that they were superior to their fellow Christians. And for me, the core of Paul's response to this problem lies in verses four, five and six, where he says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And there are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. I think if St Paul was addressing an orchestra, he might have said, look, 
There are different instruments, but they all require the same musicianship. There are different styles of playing, but they're all following the same conductor. And there are different tones and volumes of playing, but it's the same composer who wrote the piece and whose music must come through at the performance. With the Corinthians, Paul was stressing that the various gifts that various church members had been blessed with were to be seen within the unity of the whole, with each part just as important as the next, and each part being used for the common good to build up and encourage God's kingdom on earth. So the Corinthian Christians were to celebrate di their diversity while at the same time remembering that in God's eyes all of them were equal. Equality and diversity. Well, who knew that as long ago as the first century AD the Christian church in Corinth was being encouraged to be so bang on trend in today's terms. There are, of course, many other things that Paul teaches us in this remarkable letter. But behind all that serious and necessary instruction, I think we're able to see an early church that was vividly alive. A church where astonishing things were really happening, and where life was heightened and intensified. Now, perhaps we may not feel like that just at the moment. So before I leave you today, I'd like to pray that God's Spirit will continue to work through us today and every day, bringing gifts that will revive us all and empower us to help establish his kingdom here on earth. So Father, Come to us now through your Holy Spirit, breathing new life into our souls and bodies. Fill us with energy and enthusiasm in your service and sweep away all that keeps us from living as your people. Open our lives, touch our hearts and inspire us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.